Well, happy 2016, everyone. Um, welcome back. Uh, if you looked at any of my websites over the holidays, you most probably saw this picture here. This is my uh, annual Christmas and holiday tradition to post a uh, SketchUp model or a rendering um, of, I guess, some kind of a tree, <laughs> usually. Um, and so this year I went with this uh, little, you know, uh, homemade, spindly, uh, minimalistic tree with a bunch of lights and paper bags around it. Um, that I modeled and rendered in SketchUp, and I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how I made this, just to um, show some basic modeling techniques in SketchUp and some tips and tricks for for rendering. So let's get going on this in the model, actually. <clears throat> and this is how it looks right in SketchUp. It's basically a very fake stone wall. <laughs> Uh, if I only do a little stage setup like that, this is usually all I pull together because I know I'm just going to do one rendering. If I do more renderings, then of course <clears throat> I need to give this space a little more uh, definition, but in this case it's just a box with a bunch of sides removed and um, material painted on. So this is actually the um, material that's right in SketchUp, this guy here, uh, and even this material on the floor. Nothing too um, tricky about that. For the most part, it's actually in a very dark space, especially the floor here, so it's it's not going to be too visible. And it, I knew it was a fairly small um, rendering, and so I didn't have to pay too much attention to detail, but if, um, if you see more of any of these details, you want to get a better quality, because as you know, the SketchUp textures, they're made for uh, tiling, so they tile really well, but the detail isn't there. So you see here, once I zoom in, it's all very um, blurry. Although with 2016, there are actually new materials that are a little better quality, <clears throat> but in any case, this is all I needed for this one here. And then I wanted to have this tree that was basically some kind of a, I don't know, um, wood lath, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> set up, just a minimalistic tree kind of thing, so that I can put a bunch of these guys in between and just have nice light reflections and shadows and so on and so forth. And what those are, um, the idea was basically, let me zoom into one, it's basically to have this, you know, translucent paper bag with a candle inside of sorts. Um, and now, of course, this needed to be a somewhat uh, rougher in terms of shape because the paper bag wouldn't be just straight up and the candle would be somewhere in there and is placed in there. All right, so let me show you <coughs> how I did all the different components. The easiest one is maybe this paper bag here. So let me move a little over to the side. and I'm just going to draw uh, rough dimensions. I actually don't remember the exact dimensions. Something that resembles it. There we go. So just a rectangle, and then of course I removed the top so that I can look inside. So this is good, but like I said earlier, you know, this is too um, natural. This doesn't really <coughs> do it for me, because <laughs> usually they don't look like that. So what I did was I used this excellent uh, extension <coughs> that's called uh, Erode. Um, you can get it in the warehouse. And what it does is it basically <coughs> that basically breaks edges and jitters all the points, you know, and makes us look far more, far more realistic. So um, all you need to do is highlight your geometry, go to the extensions menu and click on erode, and then you see your iterations is how many times this gets broken, and then pointiness has to do with, you know, how far this moves. And then if I click OK, there we go. This is a nice crumpled paper bag, isn't it? So this is the setting that I used for for um, my model. As you can see here, the bottom isn't flat right there. So if you cared about that, <coughs> then only highlight the top, go back to extensions, erode, run it again, and then the bottom is nice and flat so that you can sit it on something, um, and the rest looks like a crumpled paper bag. So in my case here, you know, I. I it wasn't too precise, so you see here that these guys actually go into the floor, which doesn't make sense, but then at least, you know, up here they can overhang a little bit, so <clears throat> that nicely makes sense. So that's how those came to be. 
very easy, very simple to do. And then I just did a bunch of rotated copies of exactly the same. I actually made this a component. And before I made it a component, I placed in a light. And what I'm using is the, the, the Twilight Render software, <coughs> which I like quite a bit. Um, and let's see if I can f do it fast. Um, you can easily create a light. Let's see, let's hope it works. Yeah, of course I messed it up, but basically um, you place a light right in the middle and then you um, adjust the uh, the settings. And what I had there was a point light, of course, because it needs to radiate in all directions. <coughs> I didn't bother about modeling any kind of candle or something inside because you, all you would see is the radiator light. Um, and then you play with the power settings and so on. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so that's that. And like I said, I made a lot of component copies so that it's nice and efficient and I placed them on the ground, I placed them up here, and so on and so forth. Nice random rotation and it looks fairly realistic. So now for this tree, I did a little bit of a different approach. So basically what I needed was these edges here <coughs> because I wanted to extrude um, just one by one inch wood pieces along those edges and then um, have it so that you know this would be something that would be put together one way or another glued or whatever and um, and so in order to extrude anything along those edges you need to get the edges and um, in order to actually make the whole tree what I did was I started from a circle so I can show you that just really quick so you start from the circle tool and then you can just simply you know start wherever you want to uh, in my case here I already changed the number of sides to 12 um, because by default it's 24 of course and so by default a circle will look like this and you have 24 edges which which would have made it look very busy in my case. <coughs> 12 was just right. So start the circle tool. Before you click anywhere you see down here it says 24 edges. So then we're going to switch that to 12 or whatever else you want to do of course. <laughs> and we're going to draw that and then I'm going to just move that circle over here. <coughs> And then it's a simple push-pull to get it up there. Now the next step is to take the top and scale it in. There's a bunch of different ways you can do that. Um, just highlight the tops. So just double-click on the top or highlight it by you know, drawing. Um, but double-click works most probably best in my case. Then you can go to the Scale tool. And as you know, if you do this, it won't work properly. You have to hold down the control key. And then you can do proper scaling. There's different ways you can do this. You can do uh, a similar scaling with the um, Fredo Scale plugin, where you can actually give it an accurate number and um, orient this, uh, the, the box properly before you do it, all of this here, basically. And then for the next level, so I just pulled it out and um, did, did two more levels. All right, so that gave me this tree. Um, now, as you know, all of these lines are, um, are are not real lines. So I basically went, drew lines on that, and rotate copied them all around. So that I ended up with a tree that looked like this here, right here. Um, now another nice shortcut is the um, Selection Toys plugin, where I can now only select the lines by highlighting everything. Oops, messed that up right here, highlighting everything. And then you can pick what you want to select. So in my case here, I want to select only the edges. And you see, everything else is gone. And I can now copy the edges out of there. and. I got those to start. Now the other thing that I did here was I connected these guys with simple lines. 
Wait, let me see if I can get one right. From here to there. <clears throat> and again, a rotate copy all the way around to, to get them all in there. All right. Next is the extrusion, and there's a bunch of different ways you can extrude. Um, uh, yeah, there's the extrusion tools uh, extension. The one that I used here was the here we go, the profile builder. Um, and you you can do this with a free version of profile builder, um, where you can then highlight all the lines that you want to extrude about, and you pick whichever size you want. I want it a one inch by one inch. And then you say build a long path. Now you see here it says there's no solid path, or uh, no closed path, whether you want to extrude along each edge. I'm going to say yes. And I'm where I want to be. There you go. So that gave me all of these guys. <coughs> now the uh, home worker, <laughs> no, the, the, the DIYer basically in me wants to clean this up here. But the renderer in me says, well, from this distance you don't see it. And um, even in the final model, you don't see these overlaps. And so just for the sake of efficiency, I ignored that. <coughs> now again, this is not how you build this. <laughs> and um, I took a shortcut there, basically. But again, that's, that's, that's all it needs. And then I painted a material on there, and I basically used the um, the plywood material because it has a bit of a, uh, a not clear grain orientation and it works oft, uh, often quite well as as fake wood but again you know if you if you were to zoom in to this level here you would want to have nicer wood grain on there than than what I have this kind of blotchy look um, only looks good from the distance all right so those are the um, plugins I used and the different methods I used to model all of that. And then let me get the perspective just right. Here we go. And then I use the Twilight um, rendering engine to, to render all of this. <coughs> and um, actually, wait, before I do that, let's fix up the materials. So let me show you how I changed my materials. So I started here in the back. And as you can see here, there are some lights up there. There's one here, there's one there. It's a, kind of like a wall wash of sorts. Um, just brings out the shadows quite nicely. But it only does that if you have bump enabled. So you see here, there's um, there's the uh, flagstone material from SketchUp. Nothing new there. That's just applied. And then in here, you can uh, assign some kind of a material template. In my case, I just left it as default because all I needed was the bump um, to bring out the deep recesses. So I switched that to SketchUp. Size 1, invert texture so that the black goes in. And that's all I needed to do for the for the background. Um, on the ground here, I got a little more reflection. Basically, where I have a light, I want to see some reflection. And so then you want to pick a material that does have bump. So here, as you can see, I inc increase the bump uh, to 2. And that gives you these recesses that you can see right there. <coughs> but I also picked a stone texture right from the templates. So if I go to a stone, I can pick one of these guys. Um, so that I get some reflection. You know, whenever you have a light, you want to see some reflection. Otherwise, it just looks too flat. Okay, so that's that. I think I added a bump to my wood material. Let me see if I can catch it. Uh, right there. And with wood. Very slight bump, not too much. Um, and, oh yeah, of course, most importantly, the paper bags. Okay, so for the paper bags, you have to look through your rendering software. In my case here, there's the translucent option right there. Um, and that's the one that I used, uh, which gives me inside reflections and translucency, and that's exactly what I needed. So in terms of bump, you could add bump. In my case, I actually just added a material color, um, and 
uh, no texture, but you could even give it a paper grain texture if, if you render this up closer. But from this distance, again, that's good enough, basically. Alrighty, so that's the whole setup. Uh, I tweaked a little bit the um, light intensities and so on and so forth. Um, and then I rendered this. And in terms of rendering, you know, same as always, start small, make it larger as you need to, uh, start at lower resolution, make it higher as you need to. This kind of rendering is great with this interior setting, it's progressive render um, that improves it the longer you let it run. Um, basically because there's special reflections, there's translucency and all kinds of stuff that increases render time. And so then, let me see if I can make this a little smaller and start it. Um, so then you can just let this render, go for a coffee, but you can already see, there we go, it's actually quite nice. Here, let me pull this down a little. There we go. So you see the lights coming through, you see the reflections on the slightly glossy floor. Here in the background you see my wall wash lights are producing shadows because of the wall bump. Um, getting nice reflections on this wood structure-y thingy. <laughs> and uh, it's a nice moody image. So that's exactly what I wanted. And so then um, for the final render I made it larger of course. And I let it run for a while. And that's how this um, Christmas picture basically came to be this year. Again, here's the final version. Let me just pull this in. And um, it's quite nice, I think. In any case, I hope I gave you a few ideas uh, for um, plugin use, rendering, etc. Um, if you got any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, other than that, happy. 2016.